name's Tristan Petrash. Okay, so I finally decided to give in and try a TikTok trend. And the dish that intrigued me the most was sushi bake. That trend is like so last year. <sighs> yeah, well, whatever. Shut up. So yeah, I'm a bit late to the party on this one. But in all fairness, sushi bake actually does predate TikTok. In fact, it's a very popular dish in Hawaii, especially amongst the Japanese population there, where it's served at parties and large dinners, kind of in the style of a casserole. Since we're making a sushi style casserole, the first thing we need is sushi rice, which is a short grain rice with a very high starch content, giving it its distinct sticky texture. Regardless of the type of rice you use, always the most important step is to rinse it first. As the grains of rice get knocked around during drying, packaging, and transport, they break and essentially coat themselves in rice flour. Rinsing them allows the grains to separate individually and also improves the overall texture. For short grain, a rice to water ratio of 1 to 1.25 will result in perfectly cooked rice every time. Season with kosher salt, bring to a boil over high heat, then cover and simmer on low for 20 minutes. Now, there are a multitude of ways to make a sushi bake, but for me, shrimp is the way to go. I'm using medium-sized tiger prawns, which, considering their decent size and quality, are relatively inexpensive. This portion for the entire dish breaks the bank at a whopping $3. They generally come deveined and just require a quick peeling. To peel them, simply pull apart the shell from either side, then pinch the tail and pull the shrimp out. Easy peasy. The remaining shells can also be used to make stocks and flavored oils, so I always recommend tossing them into a plastic seal bag and freezing them for future use. Now you can leave the shrimp raw, likening to the style of Hawaiian poke. They will cook a bit once everything is baked. You could even fry them in a pan. But fish and seafood in particular does best when poached, which is how I like to do mine. So in a large pot, combine water and kosher salt. You can absolutely flavor the water to infuse more flavor into the shrimp. Garlic, bay leaf, lemon, celery, shallot, and peppercorns, otherwise known as corbouillon in French cooking, is pretty standard. But with the amount of bold flavors we're going to be cramming into this dish, it's not really necessary, as they'll just kind of get lost. Before we poach the shrimp though, we'll need a large bowl of cold water to shock them in and stop the cooking process. This will prevent them from overcooking when we bake them. Then toss the shrimp into the poaching liquid. Since they are going to be baked afterwards, the last thing you want to do is fully cook them now. Otherwise, you'll end up with sushi baked rubber bullets. I mean, as appetizing as that sounds. So as soon as they just curl and turn pink, immediately remove them and add them to the cold water. At this point, they're about 70% cooked through. Because shrimp are so small, they'll only take about 10 to 15 seconds to cool down, at which point we can remove them from the water while gently squeezing out any excess. Using a sharp knife, cut them into bite-sized pieces. It will of course depend on how large the shrimp you're using that will determine how to cut them up. For these ones, 3 to 4 pieces is enough. You can also just choose to chop them up or quickly blitz them in a food processor, but then you'd be losing all of that really nice texture shrimp has to offer. Toss the cut shrimp into a large bowl, and along with that, we're going to add some thinly sliced green onions. You're going to want to go fairly heavy on the onion here too. I'm using 5 or 6 large ones. Then to that, add mayonnaise. This will be the bulk of the mix. Think shrimp salad or poke consistency. Soy sauce, sesame oil, sriracha, or sub for your own favorite hot sauce. Totally optional, but a little bit of Thai chili sauce just gives it a bit of sweet and added heat. Then season with kosher salt and freshly cracked black pepper. Give everything a good thorough mix. It may seem a bit too saucy at first, but once we layer everything in the baking dish, the excess sauce won't seem as excessive. It's good to go right away, but allowing it to sit in the fridge for at least 20 minutes up to an hour will intensify the flavor. To finish the rice, start by taking a spoon to stir or fluff the rice. Because this is sushi rice, we're going to treat it as such and season it with rice vinegar, sesame oil, and a bit of sugar. Midden or sweet cooking wine works too. For the baking dish, I'm using a 9 by 6 inch pan. 
This recipe makes enough for two to three people, so a nine by six is perfect. You won't need to worry about adding any parchment paper or brushing the inside with oil to prevent sticking. We're basically only gonna brown the top of the sushi bake, so nothing will have a chance to stick to the bottom. Set up your mise en place with the seasoned rice, shrimp mix, and lastly, some Japanese furikake rice seasoning. Furikake is pretty common these days in most grocery stores, but if you're feeling adventurous and want to try making your own, you can check out episode 86 to learn how. To assemble, start by layering the bottom with the rice. Then wet a spoon in some water to prevent the rice from sticking and even out the layer, pressing down firmly to pack it in. Oh, it's at this point where I f***ed up, but you'll have to stick around to the outtakes at the end of the episode to find out how. Sprinkle a decent amount of furikake on top of the rice and even it out with the spoon, followed by the shrimp mix. Then set aside before heating your oven to a low broiler setting. If your oven doesn't have one, you can use the regular broiler setting, just keep an eye on it. While the oven's heating, we're next going to make a soy sauce glaze for on top. So in a small pan, combine equal amounts soy sauce and sugar. Then heat over medium heat, stirring until the sugar is dissolved. As it simmers, we're going to add a cornstarch slurry to thicken it, consisting of equal parts cornstarch and cold water. Pour the slurry in slowly while whisking. Then continue to stir until it's viscous, you can see the bottom of the pan, and it passes the ever-reliable spoon test. Place the sushi bake in the preheated oven and cook until the top begins to brown and bubble. We're not fully cooking or heating it, it just needs to be a bit warm inside and bubbly on top, so it'll only take 5-10 to 10 minutes depending on your oven. Then allow it to cool slightly while we prep the last few things. Even though this is a baked sushi, we still need some fresh, raw, and green to brighten it all up a bit and really drive home that sushi experience. Now you can, of course, use whatever you'd like on top. You do you. But for me, that's some cucumber that I'm thinly slicing using my Japanese mandolin. As well as some avocado. Now if removing a pit with a knife is one of your deadliest fears, I've got some good news for you. Simply take your two fingers and thumb and push the pit out from the back. Then using a spoon, scoop out the flesh. Like the cucumber, we're gonna thinly slice the avocado as well. But because we can't use the mandolin for that, we'll have to rely on our knife skills. And if your knife skills could use a bit of an upgrade, consider signing up for a monthly membership to my channel. There you'll get access to my new how-to series, starting with basic knife skills. Now as far as what to serve with it, it's most commonly done with toasted pieces of nori that come in these small snack packs. I find them a bit too crumbly though myself, so I just go with some regular nori that I cut into large pieces, almost taco sized. But you can also be like my girlfriend and use romaine or any other big leaf lettuce. Then it's just a matter of fanning out the cucumber and avocado and alternating between the two on top. Drizzle over some of the warmed soy glaze and finish with some toasted sesame seeds. And that's it. Sushi bake. Look, I'll be perfectly honest, I was a bit skeptical it would be that good. But it really is that good. It kind of has a flavor reminiscent of a mayo-based poke bowl, but when combined with the nori in a sort of taco way, it really does remind you of a California roll. And that's not bad. Aside from the avocado being the most expensive part, this dish is relatively inexpensive to make, coming in at around $7 for the entire thing. And that too is not bad. If you like my channel and are interested in supporting it while getting some cool perks, like access to my private Discord server, bonus content like my how-to series, and shoutouts and episodes, you can check out my coffee page. I'll leave a link for that as well as the equipment I used in this episode as well as the gear and services I used to make it in the description. And hey, if you've made it this far, consider liking, subscribing, and commenting. They're the easiest ways to help make the channel grow. Thanks for watching, and stay awesome. Oh, and here's how I f***ed up. <laughs>